Hi, this is Marjorie Wildcraft with Grow Your Own Groceries, and today I'm privileged to be able to interview Lisa Bedford. Uh, Lisa is also known as the Survival Mom, and she's the author of a new book called Survival Mom: How to Prepare for Worst Case oh, oh. Everyday Disasters, Everyday Disasters, and Worst Case Scenarios. It's a book with a whole huge amount of really useful information for people especially new and coming into the preparedness community and wanting to be uh, just a little bit more prepared for things that might come at us. And today Lisa's going to talk about three tips for getting started in uh, starting uh, your backup food supplies. And uh, Lisa, why don't I let, let you go with that? Well, you want to start with the foundation of just beginning where you are. That is so important to not be intimidated by what you hear other people saying or doing. Mm -hmm. Just start right where you are. And so some survival moms may find themselves in an apartment or a very small home or something much larger. So it's just start where you are. So with that as a foundation, with food storage, you want to start with what you already like and know how to make. And that is so important because so many times in the past, when a, uh, a crisis you know emerges, people want to stock up on foods they're unfamiliar with. Yeah, so they're going to buy the buckets of this and that and the other that right. they don't actually eat. They'll be buying just tons of beans in cases you know which they never eat beans, or freeze dried food. They've never tried freeze dried food, but that's the survival thing to do. So you want to start with what you already. Uh, what your family already enjoys. A lot of times we are, have the impression that in a crisis, oh, our kids will eat anything if they're hungry enough. People who say that have never dealt with a four or five year old kid who is just determined they are not going to eat whatever it is you put for dinner. And if that's not going to happen now, you know, hunger is only going to make the crisis bigger and intensify the feelings of panic. So why do that? Mm -hmm. Why set your family up for that? So first of all, start where you are with what you already like. Secondly, you want to make uh, sure that the foods you want are accessible. So if you're trying to go for um, you know, organic freeze-dried foods, those may be difficult to come by. But start with just your local grocery store. And my third tip is to start with um, foods that are very easy to prepare. And that is so vital because in an emergency, let's say you don't have access to your kitchen or you don't have access to electricity, the, the stove or the range you're used to cooking on, and you find yourself maybe having to heat up food in a solar oven or over a campfire or something like that. So you d just get rid of any recipes that are overly complicated. And, and you were, I heard you were recommending that people maybe soups are really easy to make. You know, I think that every family needs to have uh, a stockpile, if you will, or a stash of ingredients specifically for soup. So, for example, you can buy a number 10 can, that's about a gallon, of chicken bouillon or beef bouillon. You can also buy that same size can um, of tomato powder. So you could make a, uh, a soup based uh, with a chicken broth, a beef broth, or a tomato based soup. And then just whatever you have on hand. It could be garden fresh vegetables. It could be um, canned vegetables that you've picked up at the, uh, the supermarket for 59 cents a can. Mm -hmm. It could be canned beans or it could be dried beans that you've cooked. The variations are limitless. And the nice thing about soup is that you can really make it filling with something my grandma used to call meal stretchers. And that would be ingredients like rice, beans, pasta. So all of a sudden, maybe we don't have a whole lot of money for meals, but I can throw in a handful or two of uh, elbow macaroni. And that makes the meal more filling and it's going to go a lot further. So soup is probably my number one survival recommendation when it comes to food storage. So stand, uh, that's great because almost everybody likes soup of some form. and. And, and kids will always dig out the parts that they like they, yes. the best, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. Right. Well, well thank you so much You're for welcome. spending time for us, and um, highly recommend Lisa's book. And uh, by all means, do get started with uh, storing some backup food, because we just don't know what's happening, and it just makes sense to have a, a little bit of food in our pantries. So this is Marjorie Wildcraft with Grow Your Own Groceries, and we'll see you on the next segment.